Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum. So today, my group and I, which is consists of Shazwani, Aina Afika, Adam, dan Bahid, will present to all of you about what you should know about Malaya. So in this video, we will tell you further about Malaya Tiger. Alright, I hope you will enjoy. Tiger of Malaya, or scientific names, are Panthera tigris, which is subspecies that is native to peninsular Malaysia. Its habitat is in Malayan Peninsula of Southeast Asia. In Malaysia, tiger is symbolized of bravery. Locals also call it Pak Belang. Tiger is also an expert in swimming. As you can see, he loves to swim in, in this point. Tiger also love to live alone, but except when he's mating. Tiger also take care of his children until two. Oh yeah, back in 1950s, Malaysia was estimated to have as many as 3,000 tigers. But, but Malaysia national tigers nowadays estimate that are thousands uh, less than 200 tigers left in Malaysia. So we as responsibility Malaysian, we have to do something regarding this issue. The weight of tiger is depends on their age and their food intake, which is can be uh, from 80 kg until 150 kg. Oh, for additional info, do you know that tiger also been used as symbol of the, our national children team? Oh, you don't believe me? Alright, we move to the next one. Wow, this is so good seeing them give the full support to our national team. We yeah, are for information. Their name, their name is Akhil Smalaya. Alright, thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Aina Afkabinci Mali. I am going to present about the traits that leads to extinction of Malayan tiger. So, there are three main causes that leads to for extinction. Firstly, is habitat loss. Habitat loss can happen when there are industrial development, urbanization, or agricultural growth. Yes, it is true that these three actually give benefits, especially for the human, but somehow it can give negative effects, especially for those with no organism that live in the forest. Why? Okay, these Malayan tigers are forced to live in an in an unnatural environment. What I mean by unnatural environment is when they, the percentage of population on prey is deficient. As we know, these prey are the source of food for the tiger. When the source of food of the tiger is being interrupted, it likely can lead to the extinction of the tiger too as the population of the tiger will be decreases. Through habitat loss also, it also can lead to the human-tiger conflict. Why? In the forest, when the population of prey is deficient, they went to the village site of that there are human and there will be source of food for them. So when they go there, they will that they will have food they, that they can eat. However, of course, these humans will be afraid of the tiger because the tiger might eat them, right? So to prevent that thing from happen, they tend to kill the tiger. So in India. They purposely put poison in the food that they know that the tiger will eat because the tiger keep on coming to the village. So they purposely put poison in the food that when the tiger eat the food, they will die as they eat the poison too. Okay, secondly is hunting and poaching. Hunting, what is hunting and poaching? Hunting and poaching is the illegal hunting and killing of animal. Why? These poachers Tend to, uh, tend to sell the parts of the body of the tiger at the black market because each part of the body of this tiger is actually high in value. For example, their bone can make as a medicine. Their skin and fur can make as a decoration or ornamental purpose while their meat is actually as a luxurious food. Hunting and poaching happen almost in every country, even in Malaysia. Thirdly is deforestation. Deforestation, it can lead to climate change. As we know, every living organism has their own condition to live. Same as the tiger. 
when climate change happen, it can affect the food chain. For example, it can attack the affect the population of the producer. When the population of the producer is being interrupted, it can lead to the other consumer, for, such as the tiger. So when the food sources of the tiger being interrupted, it also can lead to the uh, decreases of the population of the Malayan tiger, which can lead to extinction too. So it is actually a very serious problem that happened almost in every country, even in Malaysia too. As we know, Malayan tiger has been announced as one of the most endangered species in the world as their population. Number of tiger, Malayan tiger in this world has been so, uh, so low such as from 250 to 300 I guess. Okay, I think that's all from me. Let's move on to the next part. Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurisha Zawadi Medhi Muhammad Today I will present about how to conserve Malayan tiger. One of the ways to conserve a tiger is by increasing the number of conservation and research centers. As we all know, uh, Malayan tiger population has decreased rapidly nowadays. So it should need to be taken by the authorities in order to conserve them by establishing more conservation centers which can either act as in situ or ex situ conservation. Uh, some example of the existing conservation center is the National Wildlife Rescue Center in Perak and the National Tiger Conservation Center in Pahang. Besides, the purpose of more of the view of more research center is in order so more knowledge could be about my tiger can be gained by the by researching deeper about the species and help to find and obtain other alternatives to ensure the survival of the Malayan tiger species. An example of existing research center is the Malayan Tiger Research Center which conducted research on habitat enrichment, wild tiger breeding and its food sources. Other than that, the authorities need to enhance the enforcement program. They can increase patrols and enforce uh, operation to monitor and protect the Malayan tiger, especially in habitats that are targeted by the illegal poacher. Along with that, the authorities must impose high fines and imprisonment on those who violate the rules such as illegal logging and hunting. Next is the public awareness program. This is to increase the public awareness through exhibitions, talks, community dialogue, and volunteering program through the Department of Wildlife and National Parks Peninsula Nation, which is also known as the Perhidikan and the other NGOs. Uh, for example, institutions and school also can involve their students in particular program like the uh, Biodiversity Education Program. Last but not least, the NGOs or authorities can organize and publicizing campaign to people on conservation of Malayan tiger. They can publish more videos and infographical poster on social media and publish news article on our Malayan on our Malayan tigers as well as the launching of the Malayan tiger campaign funds. Uh, this is a good opportunity to receive corporate or individual donation. Uh, in order to contribute to the conservation of Malayan tiger. And that's all from me, thank you. Back in 1950, Malaysia was told to have as many as 3,000 Malayan tiger. In 2014, the number of Malayan tiger was estimated to have declined around between 250 to 314. And recently, our Malayan tiger have been classified as critically endangered species under the IUCN Red List, with less than 200 left in the wild today. But here's some good news. A 11 years old female tiger have given birth to three healthy cub at Taiping Zoo. With these three cub, there's still hope for the population of Malayan tiger to increase for the next five years.